I am Tejas Kumar, and I'm a developer relations engineer at Datastax. Today, I'm here to help you take your first steps on Langflow and build truly capable Gen AI applications visually. To do so, let's get started using our command line. So let's make a directory called Langflow, and we'll CD into that. Now, we can set up a new virtual environment with Python, like this. When it's set up, we can activate it by running source vnv bin activate. And we can confirm that it's running by this parenthesis vnv here. Okay, vnvs help make sure our dependencies are all good. So now we can install Langflow, but we want a pre-release version and we want to force reinstalling any modules just in case things have changed. While this happens, let's talk a little bit about Langflow. It's currently in an alpha status. Langflow is alpha 1.0. And what that means is it's not yet fully stable and you may run into issues. If you do run into issues, let me emphasize that we're creating this in the open. It's open source and it's together. So if you have any issues at all, we invite you to join the Discord or open issues on GitHub or be a part of the conversation because we truly believe we create good software when we do it together and not in silos, okay? Any issues you have, we will hear, we will fix. And by we, I mean the Langflow team, okay? So now that we're installing it, let's check on the status. We still have some way to go. Let's talk about the application that we're going to build. We're going to build an application that uses RAG, that is retrieval augmented generation, meaning we retrieve data from somewhere, ideally similar to the context we want to talk about, and we use that data to augment the generated output from large language models like GPT-4. This is called RAG. Langflow makes this exceedingly easy to do so. The application we're going to build is an answer engine that answers questions about React or server components for building user interfaces by one Kent C. Dodds. So what we've done is we've actually scraped X, formerly Twitter, and downloaded a number of posts, social posts from Kent C. Dodds. We have this running on Astra. So if we go to Datastax Astra here and we go to the Blazor database, if we go to the Data Explorer, we have KCD GPT. This is a collection full of Kent C. Dodds' posts from social media. Okay? And what we want to do is leverage his wealth of information, as he's a leading figure, to answer questions about React and server components. And we'll build this whole flow with Langflow. Now let's check on the status. Okay, Langflow is done. So let's run this locally by running Langflow run. And this is going to open Langflow for us. So as soon as this computes, we'll see some output. Great, it's starting and any second now, we're going to get, there we go. So this is Langflow and it's empty. There's, there's nothing here. So let's create a new project and we'll do vector store rag. This is going to set up a number of components for us to get the outcome we desire. We start with a chat input, and that's exactly what it sounds like. It's like text input. Um, we also have a tie with an OpenAI embeddings model. Embeddings are a way to, through machine learning, assign numeric meaning to strings or words. So you have words like hot dog and burger. The machine learning model gives them a number, turns them into a list of numbers actually, that are somewhat close to each other in high dimensional space. So items like burgers and hot dogs are close to words like food. And therefore, when you search for what should I cook tonight, it will know where to look in this space and give you the right data. That's what embeddings are for, okay? So we connect the embeddings model and the chat input to AstraDB search. This is a component on Langflow. We can set API tokens as variables. So we have here the OpenAI API token, and you can create any number of variables you want by just clicking add new variable. And you can choose between credentials or generic variables, okay? Credentials obviously are secure. So we, we choose the OpenAI API key for OpenAI. For Astra, we choose the Astra API token and the Astra API endpoint. The collection name is KCD, that's Kent C. Dodds GPT, and the input value is bound to the chat input, the embeddings is bound to the embeddings model, and this one is good. We break the text returned into chunks, just so that it's easier to process, and then we take those chunks and give them as context to the prompt that we're going to send to OpenAI. Also, the question comes from the user's chat input. This whole line helps us understand where this is coming from. Let's augment the context a little bit and say, you are Kent C. Dodds the author. And that's it. We'll augment this that way. We'll check and save, and we'll bind text to the input for our OpenAI chat large language model component. Okay? We'll talk to GPT-4 Turbo, and for the API key, we'll use the same OpenAI API token. Temperature is how creative we want to be. If it's one, it's going to be completely hallucinogenic. Let's just do one and see how much it will hallucinate. The whole point of RAG is to minimize hallucination, so this should be fun. Okay, finally, we have a chat output, and the sender name is Kent or K Kent, Kent GPT. This is our whole flow. This is what Langflow is good for. You visualize the entire chain of RAG. Let's run this and see what happens. 
Now, Kent organizes a conference called Epic Web Conf. It's pretty recent, and so there's a high chance that not a lot of large language models would know about this. Actually, there's a good chance that no large language models would know about this. Through RAG, let's see if we can get some answers about it. Let's start by asking, what is Epic Web Conf? And what we'll see here, if we expand this, is the chunks that come from our Astra store get a little preview of what to expect at Epic Web Conf, for example. So it's thinking, and it's going to give us some output here. I'm glad you're excited about Epic Web, Web Conf. While I'm not can't see Dodds, I can tell you that Epic Web Conf is envisioned as an engagement gauging event for web development professionals and so on. This is because of our temperature. Let's go and fine tune that and come back. So temperature, let's make it way less hallucinogenic and just say temperature is 0 0.1. So now there's no way this will actually hallucinate. Let's go back and run this and now ask who's speaking at Epic Web Conf and who are you? And this time, because we reduced the temperature, it should just say I'm Kent C. Dodds. Let's take a look. Again, the results from Astra are all here. And so when it queries Astra, we'll see the results change here. As Kent C. Dodds, Done, because of the temperature. I'm thrilled to be part of the lineup at Epic WebConf. I can't speak for everyone who will be taking a stage, but it will be full of a diverse group of talented speakers. Excellent, including testing library and Epic React. So we're getting more details here. Let's make this a little bit smoother and then finish, okay? So to do that, we'll go here to OpenAI and we'll go to the advanced settings and turn on stream. This will just help our time to first word be a little bit quicker. Finally, what can you tell me is the best thing about React. And now what we can see is the AI starts responding immediately and it streams in. I can't speak directly for myself here, but based on the enthusiasm is its commitment to innovation and improvement. And so these are answers that come straight from our RAG data that, that Kent has posted. I truly feel like React is the best front end tool and so on and so forth. So with that, what we just did was we built a full end-to-end -end flow for RAG with Langflow from chat input to embeddings, to Astra search, to chunks, to the prompt, to the large language model, and finally to the chat output. There's also a flow here for loading data into Astra, either a file, or if you go to inputs, there's multiple other inputs. There's also web APIs you can use as a source. You break them into text chunks, tie them with embeddings into Astra DB, and what you can do is ingest data. So you have inputs down here, outputs down here, up here, excuse me, and you can combine them to create truly powerful AI experiences for all of your applications. Once you're happy with this, you can expose it over some type of API and continue to build your application. I hope this has been helpful as you take your first steps on Langflow, and I can't wait to see what you build. As usual, you'll find us in Discord and on social media and on GitHub, and we look forward to hearing from you, supporting you, and helping you build a truly excellent applications on Langflow. Thanks for watching.